most sickening aspect of this whole day, the attitude which seems to have been taken by some authority figures that victims of abuse aren't necessarily to be taken seriously because, well, essentially because they're victims. The number of children said to have been abused, a figure which seems to grow daily, points up the problem of identifying offenders before they attack again. Might it be better to adopt the system in place in the USA, Australia and Ireland and make it an offence not to report allegations or incidents of sexual exploitation? Jim Reed reports. There were 200 potential victims, dozens of witnesses, yet Jimmy Savile managed to live to 84 without being arrested. The abuse took place not just at the BBC, but in hospitals and children's homes across the country. So why didn't anyone report it? Why didn't those witnesses come forward? I'm finding that a lot of schools and institutions, such as the BBC, would much rather hide the abuse and allow the abuser to continue rather than actually report it, because of course then it would damage their reputation. We've got no clearer evidence of that than, than the recent um, trouble we've had with, with Jimmy Savile. There are, of course, safeguards in place meant to protect young people. Any organisation that works with children has to put in place a child protection policy. The local authority should be told if an allegation of sexual abuse is made or if there's a risk a child may be harmed. But in Britain, there is no legal duty to report that abuse, either to the police or to social services. The answer, some say, is to compel witnesses to come forward, to make it a criminal offence not to pass on those allegations to the authorities. Last week, 32 child protection groups, barristers and church leaders wrote to The Times calling for that change in the law. They want to see mandatory reporting of child abuse allegations, as is already the case in the US, Canada, Australia and Ireland. If we had mandatory reporting, we would, obviously, all abusers would be identified before they could continue their abuse. And we know, we know that child abusers very rarely only abuse once. Child abuse happens in institutions nationwide and without mandatory reporting we can't possibly know the scale of it. Many victims and other campaigners say a similar system in the UK would give people more confidence to come forward. We spoke to one teacher who said her complaints about a fellow member of staff were not passed on by the school to the authorities. I followed the correct procedure which was to report this to the designated person that every school has. Over time, I began to suspect that it hadn't been reported to the local authority. It's almost seen as a bad thing to report something. There's a culture of just covering things up and burying your head in the sand and hoping it will go away. But there are strong arguments against any change in the law. Last year, Eileen Munro chaired a wide-ranging government review of child protection. We have a strong culture within organisations that they should make reports and we have statutory guidance that says they have a duty to make reports and that they should have a policy within any organisation that has contact with children to uh, help people talk through is this something to worry about and then to know how to report it. So our system is ending up with about the same rate of referrals as the countries with mandatory reporting so there is no statistical evidence to suggest that we are missing more serious cases than in the countries with mandatory reporting. Large children's charities are also against any change in the law. The NSPCC claims there's no solid evidence that mandatory reporting works and it might just clutter up the system with extra unproven allegations. Newsnight understands, though, that the organisation may now conduct a review of that position in the light of the Savile scandal. And the experience of mandatory reporting in other countries has been mixed at best. In Australia, critics of the law say it's led to a huge increase in abuse cases, overwhelming the child protection system and taking resources away from other areas of social work like family support. Child protection workers on both sides of the argument agree on one thing. More does need to be done to change the culture of reporting abuse. I think there's a certain amount of crowd mentality. There's the sense with the Savile case, it appears as if a large number of people knew about it. So any one individual would have thought, well, others know about it and they haven't done anything, so perhaps I shouldn't. 
You know, there's that, that research of um, somebody on the street uh, having been injured and, and people walk past and other people then walk past. We end up behaving with immense callousness because we're following the crowd behaviour. Do you think the culture of, of mm. society has changed since 1975? It's, the, it's certainly changing for the better, but I think it, uh, we should not feel smug. There's still a lot of progress that needs to be made. The world may have changed since Savile ruled the airwaves, but today victims and witnesses say they are still often treated with suspicion as accusers and troublemakers. So do we do enough to protect the most vulnerable in our society? Camilla batman gellett of the Kids Company is here. Claire Fox of the Institute of Ideas is also here. What do you think of this idea, Camilla? Well, I, I would think it was quite a good idea if I believed our systems could cope with it. But right now, our child protection system is completely at breaking point. You just have to look at the fact that Birmingham has failed as a child protection uh, social services, and then there are others who've failed. And then if you get this kind of mandatory reporting happening as well, the whole system will completely collapse. But in principle, you're in favor of it. It's just a case of the mechanics being adequate. Yeah, I think in general, we have to look at the issue of vulnerable children in this country. And our politicians need to stand up and have a vision in relation to issues of child protection in this country. Now, Claire Fox, you don't think it, it's a desirable thing? No, I mean, I think it's worth saying that I don't think that child sexual abuse is rife and I do not think that he's on the rise. And actually, I'm actually very nervous about the climate at the moment that is kind of ratcheting up the discussion because of what's happened around one very nasty, horrible case, the Jimmy Savile case. Um, mm. Mandatory reporting, mandatory reporting, um, it would be in danger of effectively having every rumour, every suspicion go to the authorities. And I think that that will create a climate of finger pointing. Every adult interaction with a child could potentially be seen in a very Sure, uh, but as against that, you have, a, you have a pattern of repeat behaviour by these people. Yeah, uh, if you we, can get the first case on a file somewhere, doesn't it save other children? I think that there is a serious danger of taking this case and because of a variety of people ratcheting it up and a kind of, you know, bloodlust in the air... It's a witch, instead of the a very, danger of a witch hunt. In, I, instead I of the very serious case you. of protecting children, what we're going to do is do children a great disservice. Because now, and we've already heard it on this programme this evening, we conflate a whole range of different things. Sexism in the BBC, the lack of female presenters... Um, yeah, uh, OK, uh, that, you know, that no. was really confused, all of that, uh, it, I agree. But, yeah. but it was also the no, 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 it was in I, the equiring today... I, I, and it was, it was going the director general the issue, yeah. conflated the two. I I'm do making actually the point. think that child abuse is a serious problem in this country. The Children's Commissioner is about to release a report describing wide-scale abuse of girls in street gangs. We have to redefine our child well, abuse in we, this country we, is no longer limited to families. It's quite uh, endemic Camilla, in certain is, areas we've already and it got has to, to a, be addressed. We've already got to a situation in this country where parents are frightened to let their children out to play. Listen, Listen that's a different Cam argument. You Camilla, can't use that argument. Camilla, I am allowed to use the argument I use. You can't tell me what no. argument I can use. Right, let me finish it then. You go ahead and finish and, it, but I think you're and wrong. And teachers in schools are frightened to let parents take photos in sports, sports days. We've got criminal records checks, which effectively meant that you had to have a licence to work with children. Voluntary organisations frightened to work this with. This is, is not an atmosphere. argument because... Um, Camilla, it's an argument you disagree with. That no, doesn't make it flawed, flawed believe it or not. There are two sides to this argument. Because you're describing a normal oh. situation, which is adults being with children, and you're saying that I'm because there are allegations around that, that the issue of child protection... And I'm suggesting that unless we calm uh, down... Listen, we agreed that we were going to let me speak next, yeah? <laughs> OK, the, the, there is an issue here, which is that there is a problem with child protection in this country. Country. It doesn't mean that adults being with children in a perfectly OK way okay. should be addressed in an accusatory manner. But nevertheless, there is a problem in this country, and we're blind to it. Difficulty... When in Rochdale, okay. Hang, the me, police and social this services point. are describing girls who are being sexually abused as making a lifestyle uh, choice, it's a problem. I do yeah. think society the should be reorganised The question here protection. is about how one protects children and part of that has to be has it not to do with 
the belief, the credibility that's attached to accounts these children give, time after time, and it's happened in this latest BBC business, there is some question mark placed over the testimony of the victims precisely because they are victims. Now, how do you get around that? Right. We have to be very careful as well that we don't say people have the right to be listened to and believed it per se. You have to bear in mind that when people say something happened, you have to then see whether you make a decision about whether you proceed with it. Because, for example, just to use that example, uh, children can say all sorts of things, adults can say all sorts of things. There's a lot of rumours on Twitter at the moment about all sorts of people. Do you want to live in a society where rumour and finger-pointing, where people who say, I am a victim, means that the police have to be reported to, that everything has to be acted on, that we look at each other all the time as though something terrible is occurring. So you the very like seri either, the very serious instance right. in the very minor instances that they happen of child abuse are going to be drowned out by an absolute clamouring of people not even knowing what we're meant to be pointing right, our fingers okay. at. One child that being abused is one too many. You cannot call it minor. It's a problem because there's an endemic power imbalance. Children cannot hold adults accountable well, for their safety. Adults do have to take that responsibility. I'm perfectly I'm per and we're not, we're not taking that responsibility robustly. OK, we'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you both very much.